I want you to conduct this minor experiment. Go to college, attend a full day of lectures. And once this is done, sit down, grab a piece of paper or your notebook, whatever, and start recalling every single thing that you remember from all these lectures that you just had. <sighs> exactly what I'm trying to tell you. What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a fifth year medical student at the University of Oslo here in Norway. So this semester I did not attend any lectures at all and my lectures I'm talking about, you know, the traditional forms of lecture where you are sitting there as a student and there's a teacher or a professor who's basically teaching you stuff by using, I don't know, a PowerPoint or a blackboard, whiteboard, whatever. Uh, so I'm not talking about, you know, seminars or TBS, which are like more interactive, you know, more active forms of um, learning. So they don't really count as lectures. Before I break down what exactly I experienced by not attending lectures, let's have a short look at what research says about, you know, having these passive traditional forms of lectures. A study was conducted at Harvard University where students were divided into two groups for a 15-week course in physics. So group A had lectures for all these 15 weeks, whereas group B had like traditional lectures for the first 11 weeks and then week 12, 13, 14 and 15, they had more active forms of learning. Now once this course was completed, students from both group A and group B were tested like on an exam using the same exact questions obviously, where group B students who actually had some more active learning involved, they scored 10% better than group A. However, here's a twist fam. Now before these students were given the results, both group A and group B students were asked whether they preferred, you know, the traditional form of having lectures or if they preferred these active interactive sessions of learning. And shockingly, as a surprise, both groups, like most students in these groups, actually answered that they preferred traditional lectures. Isn't that insane? Now from this we can actually draw two conclusions. First of all, we as students are poor judges of our own learning. Passive learning, you know, seems quite effective when it actually isn't. And secondly, traditional lectures are not as effective as we like to think. And now let's talk about what exactly were the things that I experienced by not attending lectures. And the very first thing that I actually experienced was that now I had tons of time to myself. And I know this may sound extremely generic, so I'm gonna try and quantify the exact number of hours and days approximately which I have saved by not attending lectures. So on average we have four lectures each day and each lecture lasts for 45 minutes. So that would be 45 multiplied by four, that is exactly three hours. Plus we have 15 minutes of breaks between each lecture, so that would be 45 minutes of breaks between lectures. So in total for lectures plus breaks on an average day would be around four hours approximately. And this is not it because we're not done for the day yet because normally what students do is that after the lectures are done, they go to the library and sit down and self-study the exact same lecture, you know, by making notes, making flashcards and stuff like that. So let's say we are studying for a minimum, for a minimum of two hours. Hours. It's much more than that, but let's assume a minimum of two hours well, you need to have this minimum amount of time that we have saved. So two hours of self-studying plus four hours of lectures on a typical day would be around six hours of studying or going through the exact same lectures on an average day. So how much time have I actually saved by not attending lectures? So what I do nowadays is that I just sit down and go through the lecture PDFs or the PowerPoints and make Notion que like questions on the app Notion using the toggle feature. And this actually takes much less than actually, you know, physically attending the lecture because there are quite a few slides on the PowerPoint point which are not really relevant so you just skip through these and just you know focus on the relevant material and previously I actually used to watch lecture recordings at two times the speed but I rarely do that now these days because you know I want to save time and I don't see the point in watching the lecture recording unless there's a very you know difficult concept which I cannot understand or grasp by myself you know by googling it so let's say on average I'm spending 30 to 40 minutes on each lecture you know by self-studying uh, let's assume 40 you know just for the sake of it so 40 multiplied by 4 four lectures per day would be around 2.5 hours and that's like effective study but I'm not really that effective so let's assume that I'm distracted and having and I'm having breaks as well uh, and just add 30 more minutes so the total would be three hours in total for one average day where I have to you know self-study all these lectures so by attending lectures I was spending six hours a day on school and by not attending lectures I'm spending three hours a day on school and my learning outcome is equally good so I've saved three freaking hours a day and you know I've Accomplish the same amount of learning in half the time and now try and imagine what you could do with these three freaking extra hours per day and if that does not sound impressive or convincing let me break that down even further for you so let's assume that per semester we 
you're having around 100 days of lectures. So 100 multiplied by three, because right, we're saving three hours per day. So 100, hour, 100 days would be 300 hours we have saved. And 300 hours equals five freaking days. So we have saved five days and you can actually go on a holiday trip for these five days. That's what we're talking about over here by not attending lectures. Now, even though I have saved tons of time and this may sound completely insane, but there's still one major thing that I have missed out on by not attending lectures. And that, my friends, is the social experience. Now, this is one of the most positive aspects of attending lectures. You know, when you are there, sitting there at the lecture hall with your friends, you know, having fun, having banter, you know, that experience is quite, you know, it's, it's a totally different vibe. So even though my social experience decreased to a great extent by not attending lectures, I did not really feel it that much because, you know, probably the pandemic has gotten us all used to it you know to being by ourselves uh, but otherwise it would definitely have been a big deal for most people out there because a lot of students would argue that you know social experience is what makes college fun you know learning comes secondly because you can learn at high school you have been learning you know all your life basically you can still learn at work you will keep learning till you die but the social experience at college that's what makes college fun and that's what really counts as you know college life and i totally agree with that point i think that's a very very valid argument but for me personally it's you know more about you know the social experience every single day versus the time i'm saving which i can do which i can you know use or utilize to accomplish tons of other stuff like youtube tiktok social media other side hustles the point being that you know social experience for me personally is important but it's not really important to have that every single day and the best part actually about skipping these lectures is that you know if one day you feel like you know having or experiencing that social uh, well-being then by all means just go to college and attend the lecture that day if you, if you really enjoy that or feel like doing so on that particular day and that's exactly what I do as well. Now the last and final thing that I actually experienced was, you know, the fact that I had to rely on myself for every single thing because, you know, learning is a lot about the environment that you are in and since you are not attending the lectures, which is extremely, you know, the, like, the environment itself is quite, you know, you know, you know, encouraging for learning. The point being that you have to be responsible for your own, own learning when you're not attending these lectures. You know, there are days when I do not really feel like putting in the work or, you know, getting up at eight in the morning because I don't have a lecture to go to. So it's really hard to, you know, push yourself at days to get that work done when you don't feel like doing it. So I did have quite a few days where I had problems with discipline, where I did not want to get the work done. And hence I had started falling behind on lectures but for that i had my own strategy and even though you know i had this particular strategy for catching up on lectures it's still a big deal when you have to catch up so many lectures you know just before you know three four weeks before your exams but even though i did struggle on quite a few days i still believe that it was super valuable valuable because i have now developed this self-reliance that i have i have developed the trust in myself that okay you know what i can get this done i do not have to be physically present at the lecture i don't have to you know i don't need the professor to you know shove all that material down my throat i can actually learn this, these things by myself as well or at least most of it you know that's a wrap for today's sapiens now if you want to learn how to take active recall and space repetition to a whole new level then this is a video to watch and if you want to know why and how i stopped taking notes in medical school then here's a link to that very video so yeah i'll see you guys on the other side take care peace